Day 11 of the video series. Um, so the first set, well, did some warm-up sets first here, just to warm the brain up as well, because feeling a little bit tired from last night's lack of sleep. But I can't think like that when we're in the gym and when we're starting to work out. We can only start when we're 110%, so made sure the pre-workout kind of kicked in and just started when I felt I was ready. Now I'm starting with an isolation exercise. Um, Last week we did leg extensions to prioritize the quads. This time I'm swapping that round to prioritize the hamstrings. Uh, so got the warm ups in, and then did the first set to 10 repetitions, second set after about a minute, half, two minutes rest. And now I just did a 10, rested for 10 seconds and stripped down to 20. And the next set that we've got will replicate that, plus I'll rest for another 10 seconds after we've done the uh, 20 seconds once we've done the 20 reps and push out another 10 reps with that same weight. Oh. Holy shit, there's our four sets done. All right, so you'll notice on the heavier reps, I was going very slow, controlled, contracting at the top, particularly taking, um, taking my time on a negative to really make sure that we isolate the hamstring as we start to lose fat we're more susceptible to injury. So we've got to be very careful because we have less fluid around the joints. We'll go on to quads, pre-fatigue the quads so our muscles are broken down, ready for the compound movement so we don't have to go quite as heavy to still maximize our results. So did the 10 repetitions, rested for 10 seconds, punched out 20. You'll notice the first load of repetitions, the heavier ones are more controlled because you're gonna have more tension put on your connective tissue, i.e. your tendons and your ligaments. So we need to be protective of those areas. As we go lighter, obviously less stress is gonna be placed onto that connective tissue and more so onto the muscle because now we're working to try to pump the area. Okay, 10 repetitions, strip down to 20 after a 10 second rest. Then after the 20, uh, 20 second rest, we were to do another 10, but I ended up doing 16 repetitions. So it goes to show that the rest period was probably a little bit long for me. I completed the fourth set of 10 repetitions to absolute failure, only stripped two plates to get out 20 repetitions after the 10 second rest, although stripping a weight was more than 10 seconds. But I think I reached failure at like 11 reps. And then I had no choice but to bring out the rest pause principle then to get out to 20. And believe me, when I got to 20 and we had the 20 second rest, I really, really wanted to strip off one weight, but that is not part of the DTP Extreme Protocol. We have to replicate the rest period with the reps, and on the very last set, we have to do 10 repetitions with the weight that we previously did 20, so we had no choice. We had to keep it on.
fourth and final exercise here is another leg press, but this is called the squat press. Uh, my feet are placed higher on this machine. You know, it's automatically the plate is higher. It stays flat towards you as you come back and forward. If anything, the bottom plate comes a little bit uh, towards you, so you're able to put a lot more pressure through your heels. So I find this one targets my glutes and my hamstrings that much easier. So um, it's, it is quite different to the conventional leg press. If you don't have one of these machines available to you in your gym, I recommend that you use the, the Smith machine squat with your feet placed out a couple of feet in front of you. So as you come down, your back's uh, flat, but your legs are out in front of you. Uh, so it's a little, it's a cross between a squat and a lunge with both of your legs out in front to target a little bit more your glutes, your hamstrings. Now, because it's targeted a little bit more towards the rear of the leg, I find that I have less pressure on my knees so I don't bother strapping up on this one. And uh, now I went with a narrow stance on the leg press. So I'm gonna go slightly wider on this one now to hit a little bit more of the hamstrings and the uh, adductors. Oh. See? Fuck, thank fuck for that. Workout's done now. Oh, man. That was a tough one, but there's so much doubt that goes through your head when you're doing this workout. You're thinking, what the, what the hell am I doing this for? But then it all makes sense at the end because this is just a challenge. And if you can overcome the mental challenge, which it pretty much is, not so much a physical, you find that you're more strengthened, you're stronger for it. You're more conditioned, not just for whatever you're faced with in the gym, whatever you're faced outside, because you're able to kind of manipulate your mind and break through the challenges and make, you know, the impossibilities a possibility. So uh, don't just think of, you know, the weight training and leg day and stuff like that as being just a physical challenge. It's a lifestyle challenge if you allow it to seep over into other areas of your life. Obviously, the discipline and the scheduling allows that, and so do the challenges. So now the next challenge that we have after our post-workout shake now is uh, hitting the cardio for 40 minutes on a Stairmaster. That seems inviting after doing this, but that's what we gotta do. We gotta do what other people aren't to get results that other people can't. <laughs> 